technology that I'm presenting on Saturday is called electromechanical wave imaging. Basically, when cardiac myocytes or heart tissue is activated by electrical signal, there's a subsequent movement in the heart tissue. And what we're aiming to do is use ultrasound technology, which is non-invasive and um, very easily uh, available in a doctor's office and very portable to bring that technology to the bedside image the patient with the ultrasound and localize using the imaging where the arrhythmias are coming from. And the great thing about uh, the ultrasound is um, taking the ultrasound really only takes a few minutes and it can be done practically anywhere in the office before even coming into the hospital. And we hope this technology can localize where the arrhythmias are so that patients can discuss with their physicians what type of procedure they will require and explain to them exactly where it is, what, what is gonna happen, so they can pre-plan for the procedure before it actually takes place. And we hope this technology in the future can um, hopefully show improvement in clinical outcomes. This study is really a first step pilot study to show that this type of technology, electromechanical wave imaging, can be applied to um, a myriad of adult patients with multiple medical problems such as previous heart surgery, um, previous ablation, and look at whether or not we can image arrhythmias from all four chambers of the heart, such as the right atrium, left atrium, right ventricle, as well as the left ventricle. So it was a feasibility study to show that we could image these arrhythmias and that a computer analyzing these images could be as accurate or more accurate than board certified electrophysiologists reading a 12 lead EKG, which is the current standard of care in the clinic or in the hospital. It's a double blinded study in a single center um, with a high EP volume, and we were surprised that the computers outperformed experienced electrophysiologists with more than five years of clinical practice in 12 lead EKGs. And it just shows that the 12 lead EKG, although is very accessible, is limited in its ways because one, it's dependent on the technician that puts on the EKG. KG, and also there are parts of the heart that is not um, um, sort of tested with the 12 EKG, such as the posterior part of the heart. So ultrasound, on the other hand, can visualize the heart in three dimensions, and we can use these imagings to reconstruct a 3D image um, to look at actually the movement of the heart during the arrhythmia. All we need is really a higher frame rate of taking pictures of the ultrasound and also incorporation of their data from the ultra, uh, ultrasound machines into our algorithm to analyze really the displacement of the tissue um, to understand this mechanical movement as a response to the electrical system abnormality to deliver this sort of um, imaging to patients. Any technician who is certified in echocardiography could take the image. The computer system, the algorithm, will do the rest in identifying what is the earliest um, arrhythmia localization. The only thing that we leave to the physician is to choose when you want to start the measurement of the arrhythmia, such as um, an atrial flutter where it starts in the P wave, or if it's a accessory pathway, where is the earliest part of the delta wave and the EKG that you want to look at that correlates to the movement of the heart. So where will this technology go now? What is the next step or two in developing it for routine use? Right, so there are um, a couple of things that we would like to do. Obviously the next step would show that this sort of non-invasive imaging has um, good clinical outcomes that could actually shorten procedure times, minimize risk, or help the physician-patient relationship. But in order for us to do that, there are a couple of things that we need to do is one, make this process faster. Uh, we are an academic institution and we are not a company, so this is all with um, thanks to NIH funding for us to develop this technology. Um, we also would like to apply this to um, the images that we take in three dimensions and apply it to the 3D electroatomical maps that we have in the electrophysiology lab. There's also other imaging modalities that we would like to explore. For example, electrophysiologists are very comfortable using intracardiac echocardiography. That is a routine in our invasive electrophysiology procedures. So we would like to see also if we can use that as an imaging modality to look at it, um, the heart. Um, the benefit of the transthoracic is it's non-invasive, so you can do it in the clinic before the patient comes into the hospital. Um, the other things that other people have um, uh, possibly might undergo a test is, for example, transesophageal echo, or now there's up and coming technology called 3D ultrasound technology. So the 3D maps that we are currently making are in a rendered 
um, multiple sections of 2D to make a 3D picture. So if we actually have more data from a 3D ultrasound, we can perhaps get better resolution and accuracy. I don't think that we can ever replace the 12 EKG because there's so much valuable information. Um, the valuable information that we've been trained, you know, as, as electrophysiologists to be dependent on, you know, all these algorithms that um, our wonderful teachers have developed, but there are some limitations for the 12 e that we hope to improve on. So it's definitely we would foresee this to be used in conjunction with 12 e EKG. Mm -hmm.